Lexington. Concord. Bunker Hill. All the skill and experience in the world can't help British forces tame the chaos in the colonies. Thomas Gage now has only 7,000 soldiers, surrounded by Washington's 16,000. The loss we have sustained is greater than we can bear. Small armies can't afford such losses. The rebels' number is great. So many hands have been employed. I wish this cursed place was burned. Thomas Gage. October 11th, 1775. Without fanfare and without honors, General Thomas Gage is relieved of his command. Once Britain's most powerful man in America, he returns home alone and disgraced. General William Howe steps into Gage's boots and is already knee-deep in the American quagmire. In London, King George roundly rejects the Olive Branch Petition, Continental Congress's last grasp for peace. On October 26th, in his annual speech to Parliament, the King throws down the gauntlet. It has now become the part of wisdom to put a speedy end to these disorders by the most decisive exertions. King George III. What the King wants is a military solution to a political problem. But his call for war is anything but unanimous among Britain's people and politicians. But when Parliament votes, war carries the day. The military is ordered to send thousands more troops and a full armada to quell America's escalating revolution. Reinforcements can't come too soon for General William Howe. Hemmed in by the rebel siege, he and his army are virtual prisoners on the Boston Peninsula, along with a thousand loyalists they're protecting. With no access to the countryside, they are unable to forage for food or wood. Supply ships from England have yet to arrive. The people in Boston are running out of provisions and fuel. <laughs> 